What's up guys, welcome to the studio. I'm John the Potter and today we're talking about butter crocs. How to make, how, what are the other names for them? A French butter something or other? There's a bunch of names for them. But basically, it's a two piece thing that holds butter in it and it keeps it fresh and it keeps it at room temperature. It's what everybody wants, right? They're fresh butter and ready to spread whenever you want. Ready to spread. So if someone just asked me to make one of these for them, I'd never made them before and I thought, hey, might as well. So I made three of them, they all worked out. Uh, we're gonna have one of them for sale, but I thought I better make more because they seem like they might be pretty popular. It's actually not too complicated. It's like a small cylinder and then a piece that has a base around it that fits inside of this one. So we're gonna hop on the wheel. I'll show you guys exactly how I do it. I already threw a couple just to make sure that I could do it. And that fits right in there. I'm using about three quarters of a pound of clay for each piece. Okay, so as you can see, I got this fancy new gauge, which I've never thrown with a gauge before, but I wanted to uh, have the ability to do it. So for this project, it's not necessarily like the most important thing, because it's really only if you're gonna be throwing a bunch of pieces. I'm gonna throw to this, just the straight cylinder, so that I can make them all about the same size. Two measurements you need are the measurement between here and here, and then you also need the measurement between here and here, which will be the measurement between there and there. So, I have my two measurements for the next piece with my calipers. So for this piece, what you wanna do is not pull all the way from the bottom. You wanna start pulling, you know, a half an inch above the bottom so that you leave some See how there's still clay there left at the bottom? That's gonna end up being the lid on the top. And then we're gonna take the clay and pull up from there. Right? Now we measure and see where we're at. So that's about as wide as we wanna go right there. And then this will go around here. And then I just, I just made two little marks there to like give myself a little bit of a guide so I know I can bring the base in a little bit. Then I'm just gonna use this straight edge to kind of make it so that it's straight all the way up. See like that. And then the other thing I'm gonna do might just take a little in with that tool. And then I'm just gonna kind of gauge how tall it is cause I'm probably gonna have to take a little bit off because the other thing you wanna make sure is that this piece isn't too long, right? But you can always trim that off later too. We'll do some trimming and modifications after that's a little more dry as well. But good there, should be able to fit. And then good there, which we'll have to trim a little bit, but that's fine. So boom, there we go.
so we got 10 total thrown, so 10 pieces, but five actual buttercrocks. So now the interesting part is when you trim them. So we'll let them dry, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll trim them together. So, you know, I'll trim this like a normal piece and then we'll flip this one over so it's sitting on top. Make sure that it goes all the way down and then I'll trim it so that the top looks really nice too. And so that it just works really well to like pull it off and set it, you know, on your table, use the butter, whatever. And the other interesting part that we won't get to because I won't glaze these for a while is glazing them. You can glaze this like a normal piece, but this piece, what I did was to actually keep a little layer unglazed around the top so that it could sit upside down on the kiln like that. Some people do them where they just glaze it like halfway here so it's unglazed, which you could do that. Um, but I did end up glazing the inside and then I just dipped the whole thing and then took a sponge and wiped it off. So that's how I glazed it, but obviously you can glaze it however you like. See you tomorrow. So we have our two pieces that are now plenty dry to trim. So first I like to trim the base piece because that's just pretty simple, easy. I get it centered there, pretty close to centered. Boom. Just center it a little more. This is just a bottle cap I use to just keep pressure on it so I don't have to put any clay around it to keep it in the center. And I take that off, take a little bit, tiny bit off the bottom. That's basically it that I'll do for trimming. And then what I do is I put this one back as close to center as possible, put this piece in, and then I trim this while it's on here. And some of them, like this one fits perfectly, it's like the exact right size, but some of them have, are a little bit bigger, so then I would just take a little bit off that top, and then it would be perfect. So you can kind of choose how much you want to trim here. If you want to just trim it so it's perfectly flat. Some of the other ones I have overhang a little bit more. Then that's it. So you can just easily grab it, pull it out. Then I'll just flip it over, put my little maker's mark on the bottom, and then I'll set it aside to dry and I'll fire it in the bisque together like this. And that always helps to just prevent any warping is if you can fire jars, pieces together. There we go. All right, friends, that is it for this video. That is how I make the butter crocs. Pretty new shape for me, but something that I think will sell really well. And I'm excited to make more. And I'm making one for myself to use at our house because we don't have one right now either. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Let me know what other future projects you wanna see. Stay tuned for a future uh, video when I'll show you how I glaze these. All right, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.